Now, turning back to this heat wave, we've heard the term heat exhaustion and heat stroke, but what's the difference and how do you know the real warning signs? News for us, Dr. Peter Osto joins us now. Thanks for being here in this hot day. And my pleasure. It's cool in here. Yeah, finally. <laughs> you know, one way to look at this is that our bodies usually do a good job of regulating our temperature, but in excessive heat, that mechanism fails. Heat exhaustion happens when the regulating mechanism runs out of resources. So if you exercise or work in a hot, humid setting and don't take breaks and drink fluids, your body gradually becomes so dehydrated that you suffer a kind of shock. You have muscle cramps, you feel faint or dizzy, and your temperature is over 100, but not much over. If you don't do anything about that, it may progress to heat stroke or heat stroke can develop itself rapidly in excessive heat, and that's what happens when kids are left in hot cars. In heat stroke, the regulating mechanism gives up. The skin becomes hot and dry, and there may be a rapid pulse and breathing, confusion, or even loss of consciousness. The temperature rises to 104 or even higher, and that's a true medical emergency. You call 911, and then you try to cool the person while you're waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Well, what happens when you do get heat stroke or heat exhaustion? I mean, do you, do you know the signs as it's coming on? You may know the signs as it's coming on. The, the, uh, we, as we outlined, uh, you may feel something, or you may be observed by someone. You know, And then what happens is you get treated, and the hope is that you get better. With, with heat exhaustion, a person who has that will recover completely, usually, and that may take a few days. But the outlook for heat stroke is much worse. If you survive a heat stroke, you may still have permanent nerve or kidney damage and oh and it's serious stuff then it, yes it is a medical emergency and it all can be prevented it could it could all be prevented the key for everyone as you've heard already is to try to avoid the heat by staying in an air-conditioned place and don't wait till you're thirsty to start drinking we we don't get thirsty soon enough to avoid dehydration okay I felt a little lightheaded last night and after I had something to eat I felt a lot better well, you know but I've been drinking a lot more water than I normally do. Drink a few glasses when you get up in the morning. Drink two glasses of water early in the morning because we actually wake up dehydrated. We do. Yeah. Good advice, yeah. doctor. Thank you for being here.